This is Coogan Cassius for IFL TV in association with MTK Global. Kansas, baby! Wichita. I don't know where the hell we at. What you talking about in Wichita? Coogan Cassius in Kansas. <laughs> Have you seen the statue outside of the two guys on the horses? No, but that kind of reminds me of Brokeback Mountain, so I don't think I'm going to go look at that right, right now. You said that. I didn't say that. <laughs> But there's two guys shaking hands. Oh, okay, okay. I don't know what the meaning is behind it. I'd like to actually know what the mm. meaning is behind it. Oh, check it out. Because I bet you haven't left the hotel, have you? Actually, we did. We went to a mall where there was a dick sporting goods at. And uh, in the mall, 80% of the stores were closed down. And then we went to go see a quick movie. Uh, to kill some time. But uh, yeah, that was really about it. Nothing too crazy. Okay. <laughs> uh, I, I've never been here before. It's a, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a random place. I mean, listen. I mean, it is what it is. I'm not. You got to take the good and the bad sometimes. I mean, you know, we wanted pineapple juice. We got apple juice. So we gonna make we going to make it happen. Why not? We're going to make it happen. Why not? Um, yeah, last time out for you in Chicago. Um, yeah, had a little, we spoke about this after the fight, you had a little bit of criticism over fighting Adam Ek. you blasted him out in a couple of rounds, moved on from that. Mm -hmm. Obviously you're fighting Bogdan Dino now, mm -hmm. relatively a little bit unknown, 18 and 0. Mm -hmm. um, but what do you know about him and how much of a danger is it going to be this Saturday in Kansas? Um, you know, maybe I think he's like a quarter of an inch taller than me. Um, thinner guy, leaner guy, I think he's been in camp with uh, Eddie Joshua a couple of times what I've heard. Um, had a little incident in the, in the amateurs, and he had to turn pro. Um, never really had a step up fight in his career until now, which is me. Most of the guys' his records are, you know, journeymen. But uh, no matter who it is, man, it came too long, too much hard work. He ain't stopping his freight train. So regardless, his O was definitely gonna go. Where is this freight train heading currently? Straight for AJ's face, straight for his neck, you know. Uh, I haven't told a lot of people this, but you know, AJ took away one of my lifelong dreams as a kid, which is uh, beating the snout out of Vladimir Kitschko, you know, knocking Vladimir Kitschko out. You know, and uh, at 14, I remember telling my mom that um, I'm gonna stop Vladimir Kitschko. I'm gonna, not, I'm gonna fight this guy one of these days. Watch him on HBO. I think fighting Sam Peter somewhere at the time. And then six years later, I ended up going to camp with Vladimir Kitschko. But only two pro fights, I'm, and I'm hanging in there, you know. Even wobbled him a couple of times, I'm hurting him. So you know that gave me a lot of confidence to know where I stand in the heavyweight division. Only two pro fights, and now you speed up seven years, eight years later. Now we are still here, we still grinding the pavement, you know. And um, Vladimir K Vitaly Klitschko told me even back then, he's like, man, there's something about your demeanor, man. You have a lot of anger there that can work in your favor. But patience, boxing game is not a sprint; it's a marathon. And uh, even now that I'm learning this, dealing with the business part of boxing and the the, the, the wannabes in the sport of boxing and the has-beens that have been in the boxing, that they want to be like leeches, it's teaching me to be patient and wait for the right moment to do and say certain things. But you know me, I'm very vocal too, so you know, I can PG-13 it, but I can't shut all the way up. <laughs> I gotta say what I gotta say, I'm just that kind of person. Considering your link up with kind of Eddie Hearn, mm -hmm. especially, it's surprising that with our pool of heavyweights, even outside Anthony Joshua, that mm -hmm. you haven't come to the UK to to test yourself against any of them. Any particular reason, or is that coming? Uh, I think, like I said before, I think it's just you know the opportunities really just start to bloom. You know, uh, England was definitely wasn't a factor at first because you know. The heavyweight division was America at still at the time, but because of the hype around AJ now, and the the, the heavyweight pull at the top is just him, the De, 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 Deontay. You know, you have Dylan White, the you have Tyson Fury, Chisora. It's it's still a 50-50 factor, but England is definitely where the, the big money is at right now at this point, and the fans are more behind the sport in England than they are in America right now, and um. You know, my goal is to definitely punch AJ in the face, and he's not coming to America no time soon. I feel like there's a lot of things, there's a lot of reasons why he's running from America. But uh, if I have to chase him down and beat the brakes off of him, that's what I got to do. You know what I mean? And I really want to start off by beating the living snot out of Dylan White. 
And I mean that to the core of my heart. I want to beat the living snot out of this guy. I'm at this point where I'm sick and tired of him. His face looked like a rotten beef patty. You know, look like somebody overcooked cheese in the microwave on a frying pan. That's what Dylan White's face reminds me of. I just want to scrape him off the plate like a butter knife. Like, you ever seen cheese stick on a frying pan or an egg overcooked? That's how his face, I was going to just scrape him off the freaking pan. Like, that's what I'm going to do. Just scrape him off this earth right now. That's what I'm going to do. Not a fan of Dylan White then, Gerald. No, not anymore. I, I, I thought he was all right at first. Um, I still think he's all right. I mean, but from, from a fighter standpoint, I just want to beat the snot out of him. You know, I'm a, you already know I'm a fun lover. I'm a nice guy. You know, I come from the the ghetto of ghetto, street of street. But I don't play boxing. You know, and the people think sometimes we laugh and. We sell the sport sometimes. They take it for, for, for weakness, you know. And, uh, you know, and I don't have a problem talking smack, selling a fight, getting in your face. Because fighters are both fighters. We still talk smack to other fighters. It's part of sport. We got to learn how to take it and we got to learn how to give it. I totally agree with that. But, you know, when you're when we're in, the, in our, each other's faces, no reason to put hands on me. I'm not going to put hands on you. The minute you put hands on me, your career is over. I'm not playing no games. <laughs> Not playing that game, not playing that. You're going to hit me and the, the bouncer and the security going to jump in. I'm going to break the security hand next and I'm going straight for you. You know what I mean? So that's why I don't put hands on nobody. We talk smack all day, I'm with it. I'm about to trash talk all day. Eventually, we got to get in the ring and collect a check for me beating your bar. See, when you put hands on me, cause it's all over it after that. You know? So, you know, I think that's what kind of initiated the problem with Joseph Park and Dylan White fights to go over there. And Dylan White was talking reckless to the Sky Sports. And so they kind of cancel the trip over there. But, you know, maybe hopefully December 22nd, we revisit the idea and then we go over there to announce Chisora Dylan White fight, you know. Um, so we'll see. So were you advised not to go? No, no. Sky Sports felt like there was some threatening the, the remarks from, 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 you Dylan, no, from Dylan. Towards from Dylan you. towards me. And they were kind of not too happy about the energy around that situation. But Dylan White is all talk. Because if, if he was a real gangster, whatever you want to call himself, if he was a real beef patty, a real Jamaican shatter, he'd have waited for me to get off the plane and then he would handle business when he see me. You know what I mean? I got brothers that's Jamaican. They ain't some real shatter in New Kingston and they don't talk very much. You know what I mean? They go handle business when they go handle business. You know what I mean? So. So you, you don't believe that Dylan White's the type of person no, to no, wait for you outside no, no, the airport? Not or me. Whatever? Not me. He might pull somebody else, but not me, though. And me saying that is his invitation to hopefully he try to pull my card. So let's see how gangsty he is. You know what I mean? But uh, people, certain people talk, certain things they talk. You're not about it. Like, you know, even Deontay, he, he on Instagram raving Desert Eagles and. Machine guns and bazookas. He could do that in Alabama. That's that's cool. Everybody got guns in Alabama. But remember, real thugs don't talk about stuff like that. They don't show off on Instagram about stuff like that. You don't. It don't look, first of all, it don't look good for your persona, number one. As a professional athlete doing those kind of things. You know? And number two, just, just being that flamboyant about it. That's not me, man. I'm about love, peace, and happiness. But if you push my button, I'm going to kick your ass. <laughs> So, are you going to come to the 22nd at the O2? Uh, I'm going to try. You know, and on my management team, you know, the Wiseman Group, you know, Dean Baker, um, Sky Sports really wants me over there. But we're going to try and see how the energy looks like, you know, um, try to make it happen. I think it's definitely doing that that we make a trip over there and get a feeling for the fans and show the fans what Big Baby's about, that I'm not all just smack talk. You know, I'm an approachable, nice guy. It's when it comes to whoever I'm fighting, I'm just going to bully them. I'm going to push their buttons. Plain and simple. Okay. Let me ask your opinion. Did you watch the fight between Tony Bellew and Alexander Usyk? Yeah, I did. I did. I, I did. It was, the, it, was, it, was, it was competitive. No. You know, the younger guy, not so much wear and tear on a professional level as Tony Bellew. Um, but... You know, like I said, I felt Tony Bell was, Bell was a little younger. Now it's so much wearing Terry. It'd be a different kind of fight. But what's that? Usnov? Uskov? Uskov? Eskimo? Can't pronounce the damn name. But uh, who you talking about? You know, the guy Tony Bell you fought. Alexander Usek. Usek. 
Usek. Did you call him Eskimo? Oh, Eskimo. It's, sounds looks looks familiar. Whatever. But anyway, he ain't fe- he ain't beat me with that crap. I don't care what nobody say. He not. Did you welcome him in? I would. Heavy? I would love to welcome him to heavy division. I would beat the living. I would beat the brakes over him all day, all day, all day. He all day, all day. All day. How does he fare in the heavyweight division? Um, Let's take you and him out of it for the moment. Yeah. But he's obviously he's mentioned guys like Joshua and etc. Et mm, et but yeah. I'm assuming he won't go straight for Joshua. That he'll have a couple yeah, of fights. Yeah. He's gonna chop with some weight on. You know. He's gonna. I mean, that'd be the smartest thing to do. You know. He's too light, too small. Um, punches don't have really too much effect. Uh, there's some guys he might be able to beat. You know. Remember David Hay moved up, knocked out Chizora. You know, that, you know, Chizor, you know, that could be a fight. He might be able to possibly win, you know. He has better football than Chizor. Um, Dana White, you know, has problems with guys that are agile and move and throw a lot of punches. It's definitely because some fights have way he can definitely win. But the top elite hungry guys, that's to be seen. You know, it's the difference when you find a guy that's 205, and a guy that's 300, big difference. Big damn difference. But, I mean, he's obviously, that's what he's going to do. He's going to come yeah, into the oh, yeah, division, every, so. yeah, everybody has a plan until they get punched in the damn face. <laughs> Especially by guys 100 and some pounds bigger than him. You know what I mean? So, I wish him nothing but luck, but he's going to get smoked if he fight me, playing the symbol. I'm not playing no games with him. Hmm. Um... By the time we're doing this interview on Wednesday night, mm. so by the time this interview goes out, it will be the Thursday of the press conference. Mm. Um, we know a little bit more about Manuel Shah's position. Mm. Um, are you expecting the title to be announced for your fight with Bogdan Dino? The yeah, WBA I regular? heard. I've heard about it earlier on today. That um, regardless of if one sample made it or one failed. He did fail, so there's a suspension of six months that's going to be, you know, issued to him, and the, the belt will be vacant. So me and Daniel will be fighting for that vacant title. Um, but I've also heard that WBA will give him a chance to fight back for for the belt. Um, Fresno Kendall's also lined up for the belt, and Trevor Bryan is also lined up for the belt. Um, so. If I lived in a perfect world, I would fight Char, Fres, Brian. All three of them in three months. In three months? Three months. Okay. Um, and those are all mandatory, to say the truth anyway. So, you know, I'm not ducking and diving anybody in that short term list. Just get them fools out the way. Um, and I think it would be, you know, added to my name, and just, you know, added to the legacy and just keep moving forward. But I uh, will see, you know, the heavyweight division is changing. A lot of things are in moving play. You know, uh, Don King is, is another hard person to deal with from what I'm hearing because they offered Trevor Bryan a fight for a lot of money. And uh, I guess they couldn't get a word back from Don and, you know, Trevor Bryan's out there saying that they offered me to fight and I turned the fight down. But yet I'm fighting and he's not fighting. So I don't know what ludicrous he's talking about. I actually had to reach out to Trevor Bryan and tell him, hey, man, you're going to lose on a big payday, man. You better go knock on Don King's front door and tell him you want this fight. You know, so, uh, you know, it is what it is. Hopefully I get to punch Trevor Bryan in the face too. And uh, we'll see, we'll see. So there's a possibility that... If you're successful Saturday, I'll say if because... No, when I'm successful on Saturday. Okay, you can say that. Um, I'm going to start saying that. What? You're going to start saying that. Uh, <laughs> give my hand back. Um, Char, Quendo, and Trevor Bryant, they could feature in your next three fights. Mm. But you know that possibly won't happen over the space of three months. Yeah, I mean, no, it won't happen probably in three months, but... It hurts a little crazy. True. Yeah. So, he could uh, do, yeah, yeah he, he, he's the kind of person where, you know, I text him on a crazy message. He'd be like, it's not a bad idea. Now nah, we can't do it. Oh, this person's not picking the phone up. So it's not that he's not giving it a, he's not, not giving any thought. 
He just wants to figure out where the demographic, where the fight could be. If we can make the fight happen in time. If some of these guys are approachable and, and reasonable in their demands. And of course, if, you know, Don King for Trevor will pick up the damn phone. So it all depends. You know, I'm here. I'm, I'm, I'm here. I want to fight. Um, but I want fights that make sense and uh, fights that pay. And as well, keep me in line to knock out AJ. But I really, I'm just as bad as I want to knock out AJ. I'm itching every day to knock out Dylan White. It's getting, it's getting to that point where you have that one ed, that one wedgie in your in your crack, and you just, like you're trying to pick it, but you don't want everybody to see. It's that one wedgie that I really have right now that is really starting to irritate me. That I just really want to want to scrape him so bad. It's like, it's like you have no idea. It's getting to me now. Like where that moment when I was talking about AJ's mom, and then AJ kind of like he was like in space, didn't know what to do with himself. <laughs> Freaking punk. But uh, yeah. This one, I want, I want Dylan White now. He, he's uh, he's definitely my front run for my hit list. How old are you? Just turned thirty. Three zero. When were you thought say? July. July the what? Fifteenth. How many years are you gonna be in the sport for? Oh God, I don't know, man. Like, will you be like a forty-year-old heavyweight, or you wanna be out by then? I think by then I should be out of the game, man. I think I should. Uh, I'm at a point in my career where everything is right here within the next year or two, or a year or so. So I should be where I want to be within a year, year and a half, and you know, continue just maintaining and maintaining until I hit my late 30s. And um, by then I should be more than far enough into something else I want to do, whether it be acting, business, financing, well, you know, those great things, but uh, something entertainment. You no, know, I like to be in front of cameras. I like to be in the people's eye, the media's eye. So that's what I'm trying to say I'm exercising a lot of little things I'm testing out now. Because, you know, boxing don't last forever. But it's my main focus to where I know it's going to get me where I want to get me. So, But I don't know. I don't, exa- I, don't know I don't have exact year or exact age. But no matter how long I'm in it for, we're going we to we ride to the wheels for those. 